Welcome to this week's Cattle Call. I'm Susan Littlefield on the Rural Radio Network. We're talking on Data Dump Wednesday. I think that's the best way to describe everything that happened. Lots of information outside and inside agricultural information being passed along. So we're going to kind of unpack it all and find out why this is kind of a correction type of Wednesday and what we're seeing moving forward. Brad did a little bit of a digging. We've got some cattle inventory information we're going to take a look at as well. As you heard me just mention, I'm Brad Coima. He's with Coima, Coima and Varlick out of Sioux Center, Iowa. And let's talk about why you call this a, cor- a correction day. Hey, Susan, thanks for having me on. <clears throat> um, glad to hear you're getting a little better. Um, yeah. Well, I, you know, to me, the, the, the market, um, at the risk of sounding sarcastic, which why wouldn't I be, right? Um, it seems like the market gets caught here in these uh, in between floors, in phases, whatever. So if, if, if we don't have some really blistering good cash cattle news to, to tell the market, then it kind of goes like, well, you know, I don't have anything good today. Um, you know, that old saying, a bull has to get fed every day, a bull market uh, with good news. Uh, there's still some truth to that. Uh, you know, then, then when there isn't that news, then the market seems to sag back into that same old fret about something demand related, uh, you know, whether it's bird flu or whether it's something else that, uh, that, uh, that, the, that the market regresses back to. But um, so, I, to me, yesterday, <clears throat> the last, well, the big up day, of course, um, on um, Monday, uh, and then a little pullback yesterday. Um, I, I love the fact that the cash market is the boss right now. Uh, the fact that this, the futures market trading at an extremely steep, unusually so steep discount. I mean, 193 was the market up here late Friday uh, in Iowa. <clears throat> And those cattle are dying yesterday and today. That's my experience. They're mine. Uh, I'm, I'm uh, referencing some of my own cattle. Uh, 193, it's the all-time high. Not too shabby. Um, so like 2014, we continue to trade at a steep discount, dragging the futures like can't hardly believe it's going to be any good, right? Uh, along with it. And that's just fine. I think that's a real healthy structure. It keeps us all current. Um keeps us from paying maybe too much for feeder cattle, even though, of course, they're very high. And those guys that raise them deserve a big price, too. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I think I'm going to call it correction because I don't see any blinking here in the cash market here yet at all. So we had, and I, I talked at the beginning about it just being a data dump, and you talked a little bit about CPI. But whenever we talk about the WASD, everybody seems to focus on the grain side of it and not the livestock side of it. And it looked like some some decent information for the cattle. Well, <clears throat> a good point. Uh, I would I would probably give a little disclaimer. Typically, we don't talk a great deal about the the livestock because there's a there's a poultry number, a hog number, a cattle number. They they made some reference to the fact that even though supplies are declining because the average weights are higher, which we've talked about ad nauseum, have we not? Um, that beef production has remained uh, almost unchanged. Um, so that was part of the report. But you know um, the the. The CPI, and of course, there's a feels like there's a, a an economic report about every other day, right? Uh, but that's got the stock market into new highs. You know, heaven forbid, I put gas in my pickup this morning; it was two ninety nine. You don't suppose people would feel like economy's pretty, you know, stock market's pretty good, gas is cheap. Maybe let's go get a ribeye, right? Um, yeah. So there, there, there's some of that background stuff that still makes me very encouraged. Uh, and I'm, I'm hearing some talk that there's some uh, fully steady bids offered already in the South that are getting passed. It's only Wednesday. I wouldn't expect much trade here until the end of the week. And usually the longer it waits, the better it gets. That certainly was the case last week where we didn't trade cash cattle here till six o'clock on Friday night. Um, so I still, I still think the fundamentals of the market are solid, but we're at a big price. I get it. So let's get into the the data that you've been looking at when it comes to cattle inventory. And I think some interesting information. And again, throw a disclaimer. This is something that you have been talking about since October of last year. Well, you're very kind. Thank you. You know, everybody remembers when you're wrong, right? You know, and uh, <laughs> very few when you uh, <clears throat> when you maybe are a little closer to right. I, so yeah, let's back this thing all the way back. Everybody remembers that great big break we had last fall, right? We had that surprisingly bearish October and November cattle and feed reports bearish relative to the placements. And the placements that they, they found were exclusively in the North, particularly in Nebraska and Iowa, huge placements back there. And you're going like, it just doesn't feel like that's the case. I mean, I've got a lot of people I know in Nebraska and connections and feed there and up here, of course, after being as old as I am. And then I'm going, like, boy, it, it feels like we placed some calves. But to say we placed 
12 or 15 percent more sure doesn't feel like it you know so this is a long time ago now right you know and and so i i, I did a little work here at uh, I, can't show you the graph i apologize but take my word for it uh, of, of compiling all of the cattle whether it's negotiated cattle in nebraska formula cattle grid cattle i mean basically all the stuff contracted cattle and and i would you know this is what the chart looks like okay and, and this is what it usually looks like so this is the time of year if you're a calf fed state like iowa or nebraska south dakota this would be the time of the year when you have this big increase in numbers. Uh, it's a middle of June already. And, and instead, the, it's very contra seasonal. It's less. Now, um, people might get in an argument with me on this deal, but I, I, to me, the weather, yeah, we had two weeks of winter in January. And after that, the weather has been really, really good. No mud in the spring. Uh, probably the best March for feeding cattle that I can remember ever. April, same way. Um, and so these cattle have performed. I think a lot of us have already actually sold a lot of the big calves. Um, and and I, I just go back to what what your what your kind softball question was is I don't think they're out there. You've heard me say this, the beginning and the end of all markets start in Iowa. Mm -hmm. Nothing against you, Nebraska folks, but um, and and I, I think what that means is if you are very current and tight in Iowa probably markets all right unfortunately that's the other part of that that usually is the truth and that's where the farmer feeder sits up here and he fights the market he's not current he's got big cattle and this is where we do all the negotiation right so this is where we have the, everybody's focused on and 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 that's a bad market and that's when we get in trouble but we're on the other side of that slice of toast now and uh, so you know nobody's going to convince me that we got a, a problem with supply here not for a while uh maybe when we get later in the summer or something like that but right here i think we're in really good shape so curiosity as we get ready to wrap this up we're now into the might as well say getting ready for mid-june this is where we start seeing a lot of those sale barn sales those special those special feeder sales taking place do you think those numbers will be down as well going to the sale barns considering what the data is that you've seen should have been a little more prepared i've actually done a study well i have college interns do it for me but <clears throat> i can get good data from the south dakota barns <clears throat> and um it's black and white i mean we are down year on year we were down 28 percent from a year ago and down something more like 40 percent from two years ago uh now you could say well maybe there's more private treaty maybe you know uh, but the it, it is glaring um i the couple of uh, big specials that they had here the last little while of course you know everybody's talked about fort pier uh friday uh kimball uh, uh, uh you know cattle brought record prices in a lot of cases um you know i just so this is a little off topic but not really so a lot of cattle get sold on uh, videos right video auctions you know um mm -hmm. well, there was uh one of the big spring video auctions was uh, monday and tuesday okay um and sixty-two thousand. cheating here i'm looking at the cattle Sixty-two thousand head okay um and it was a two-day sale i remember when they sold one hundred and seventy thousand, and it was a four-day sale right okay. Now, maybe some of these cattle are going somewhere else. Maybe they're finding a better way to sell them or a different way to sell them. Um, but you can't kill cows for three straight years and have the same amount of supply. Um, I guess we're there, in my opinion, in terms of that, you know, where we're finding the dog is run to the end of the chain, in my opinion. Well, hopefully it's able to kind of recoil back a little bit. We can start seeing some of those heifers and cows staying home. That's the whole key, you know. Uh, let's 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 figure out that day where we can go on the show and say, "I'll oh, stop my hand and say, yep," but it won't be that clear. It's it's yeah. it's regionally happening. It's happening in the north. I know there's been some heifer retention across what I would call the traditional north of Dakotas, the uh, Wyoming, Montana, Colorado. Now I visit with some of these guys that I buy some cattle out of out of the southeast, and not so much, you know. And I don't know why, you know. I mean, they they've got a lot of cattle down there in the hills down there in, in Kentucky, Virginia, all the way into Florida. So, you know, it's not a, and it won't be that easy. You won't flip a switch and know until it's over. All right. Well, great conversation today, Brad. I'm looking forward to next week's. What's the best way for folks to get a hold of you? The phone number seven one two seven two two zero zero two three, or hook us up on kkvtrading.com. Thanks, Susan. Right. Thank you. Brad Coima joining us this week. A quick reminder, commodity futures and options do involve a substantial risk of loss, not suitable to all investors. And that's this week's Cattle Call on the Rural Radio Network. <laughs>